This is lecture 41. I'm going to be talking about my new paper about uh, China's bullet trains and their implications for the system of cities in China. So the Chinese government has spent uh, a huge amount of money. It's hard to know how much money they've spent on trains such as this one. You can see this fast moving train that moves at around 180 miles per hour, even faster sometimes going through some urban part of China. I've taken one of these trains uh, from Beijing to Tianjin and back again and had a very good time on that very quick ride. My paper with Xi Zhizhong of Tsinghua University examines, we don't do a cost-benefit analysis of whether these trains are good. It's a conditional analysis. Conditional that you've, a government has built these bullet trains. We're looking at the intended and unintended consequences of such trains on urban quality of life. And so this comes back to some of my lifetime work on uh, cities and quality of life. So uh, the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences just published this paper, and we're very proud of this. We hope some of you go and read this paper. The title of our paper is China's Bullet Trains Facilitate Market Integration and Mitigate the Cost of Megacity Growth. And that's both a hypothesis, and we expect that there's going to be many papers building on ours, that this is going to become a research agenda on the consequences of improved uh, cross-city infrastructure on urban economic growth in both big and small cities. So here's a picture of China. You see the three superstar cities of Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangzhou, and you see this network of trains connecting them. In the upper right corner, you see Beijing, and you see in the blue dots that it's connected to Tianjin, and you see other cities whose names I can't pronounce that the bullet train also connects to. And then in the middle panel there, you see Shanghai and nearby cities that it's connected to. These nearby cities are the second tier cities who have increased access to the superstar cities because of the bullet train. At the bottom of this figure, we show you what is the commute time, uh, or the one-way commute time before and after. Uh, and so you see that we have both treatment groups and control groups. There are cities close to Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangzhou, which were not connected by bullet train to, to the superstar cities, and their commute times remain very high. So these are cities that are too close to superstar cities to fly to, but too far to conveniently take a conventional train or drive. You see that there's other cities like Tianjin, uh, Baoding, uh, and some cities whose names I'm afraid to pronounce, who the bullet train has sharply reduced the commute time. Bullet trains built between 2006 and 2010, so we have a before-after comparison. And so the point here is that when you introduce the bullet train, the high speeds of these trains uh, for a given distance between any two cities sharply reduces the time cost from traveling from one city to the other. Effectively, what this does is it makes these second-tier cities effectively suburbs of the superstar cities, creating a new menu of opportunities for firms and households who locate there. So the big idea of our paper is uh, the basic concept that distance equals speed times time, and so you can rewrite that, that time, the travel cost between two cities, equals distance divided by speed. The bullet trains sharply reduce the time cost of accessing the superstar cities. And what we predict in the paper, and what we document with some empirical work, is that this is going to induce uh, new patterns of locational choice by firms and households. There's firms who've been locating in Beijing and Shanghai and paying the extremely high rents of being there who don't need to be there on a day-to-day -day basis. What this improved transportation technology does is it allows the second-tier cities to attract these firms and households and uh, because these guys can access cheaper rents in the second-tier cities, but still through the bullet train access the superstar cities. And so in this sense, the bullet train makes both cities stronger. It reduces the megacity growth that, that could overwhelm quality of life in the superstar cities, while simultaneously bolstering the nearby second-tier cities. And so that's why we make a big deal in the paper that the introduction of the bullet train induces Tibu migration by firms and households. Only those firms and households who need constant access to the superstar city will remain there. A, th these other units who need infrequent connection, either for cultural amenities or for productive access in the superstar city, those firms will only infrequently go and use the bullet train 
and but instead locate in a Tianjin. And so in the case of China, the bullet train is going to play a productive role as the hukou system is relaxed and citizens can migrate where they want to go. The bullet train creates this system of cities and this will improve urban quality of life for urbanites who now have more choice in choosing among the menu of cities.